I've talked about the Synology DS1019 Plus in a previous video regarding its Plex performance, specifically its transcoding performance. But in today's video, I'm taking a look at the Synology Surveillance Station software that you can utilize with the same NAS to monitor IP cameras. <laughs> Whether you're protecting yourself on public Wi-Fi, bypassing regional filters, or just simply wanting to download something without the worries of a government or a corporation not liking you for it, a VPN service is a must-have solution. And depending on where you're located, it could be hard to find a VPN fast enough for daily use. That's why the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee of NordVPN is so valuable. Because even though I can tell you I get great speeds and reliability, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. By visiting nordvpn.com slash byte or clicking the link in the video description below, you can test these speeds out for yourself with a heavy discount. And with 30 days to prove it's worth, it's a safe way to ensure you're getting what you paid for. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Byte My Bits. Now I know there's a bunch of different NVR software solutions available to the public. I personally use a Blue Iris, however, there are other options like iSpy, ZoneMinder, there's a QNAP version. I mean, there's a bunch of different options out there. So naturally there is an option available on the Synology NAS that allows you to monitor all of your IP cameras from the same NAS device that you could be running your Plex media server on. Now before moving forward with this video, this is not a paid sponsorship. However, Synology did loan me this NAS to check out and on top of that Seagate loaned me the hard drives for this testing as well. So thank you to both of those companies. So the DS1019 Plus. The DS1019 Plus comes equipped with a quad core 1.5 gigahertz Intel Celeron CPU. This one has two four gigabyte DDR3 RAM sticks in it for a total of eight gigabytes of RAM. Comes equipped with two one gigabit per second network interface cards, two M.2 NVMe slots for cache, and five total hot swappable bays. Now I'm not talking a lot about the NAS itself today. However, the performance is gonna be reflected in the software experience. So it's gonna be heavily relying on the built-in CPU and the RAM available as far as the speed of the software. But overall, this is a review primarily on the surveillance station software itself. And I will be calling on my experience and comparing it to the software known as Blue Iris. Blue Iris is an NVR software that you have to run on a Windows computer. Now there's a few different bullet points when it comes to an NVR solution that really stick out to me. And one of the biggest things that I think I and probably other people are gonna notice right away is going to be the cost. Cost is a big deal. Synology and Blue Iris has their own cost. This is just for software. I'm not talking about the hardware, but I think the biggest thing that stood out to me with the surveillance station software is the upfront cost. Now you can get licensing for one camera, four cameras, or eight cameras, but they're gonna cost you either $56, $200, or $370. Now you do get two free cameras with the surveillance station. So if if you wanted a 10 camera station buying an eight camera license, it's gonna cost you $370. Or for my setup, since I have 13 active cameras on my system, I'd have to buy an eight camera one, then a four camera run, and then I'd, I'd have one to spare. Now, the good thing here is that you can get the surveillance station software for free. It's something that you can just download directly from the app store. And it already comes with a two camera license built in, so that's good. It's just kind of a higher upfront cost to add additional cameras. You compare that to something like Blue Iris, where you have a revolving cost of $59 per year for up to six. 64 cameras. 64 cameras. That's a lot. Probably more than most people are ever going to need, but it's $60 per year, so it's a reoccurring cost. Little asterisk here that that is only if you want to get the updates to Blue Iris. I actually let my license lapse one year and I didn't have to renew it, so it's not something you have to renew if you don't want the upgrades. So one cost, basically unlimited cameras, 64 cameras, with Blue Iris versus $370 just to get eight of them. That's kind of a big difference. Doing a little bit of math with my 13 cameras, it would take 9.6 years for me to make up the upfront cost that I would get if I were to set everything up with Synology. And yes, there are a few variables here. For example, Blue Iris has to run on Windows. So you do have to consider the licensing for the Windows and you have to consider building the PC. And the sky is almost the limit when it comes to this. I mean, the system I'm running my Blue Iris on is an X99 5960X CPU. So it's not exactly a cheap CPU or a cheap system at all, especially with the 9 
1080 Ti graphics card in it. And that's not even considering the power difference between a NAS and a full blown computer. So the cost itself is heavily gonna depend on what kind of performance you want out of your server and how many cameras you want to have. Now, the next thing I look for with NVR solutions is compatibility with cameras. In my own personal test, I hooked it up to Reolink cameras, Amcrest and WGCC cameras, and they all worked flawlessly. Now, of course, all of these cameras are gonna be using the ONVIF standard. So if you have a camera that supports that, this should be compatible. Now, the next biggest thing for me is notifications. I wanna be able to get a notification to my phone when the movement is detected on a certain camera in a certain area. I wanna see it on my phone. I wanna see the preview. And for me, I have an Apple Watch. I even wanna see it on my watch. And I can say with the DS Cam app, it is actually pretty quick very reliable, easy to load, which just actually rolls into ease of setup. And one thing I can say with the Synology NAS and the surveillance station, it is actually pretty easy to set up. You can install new cameras. It's relatively easy to configure. You just, you know, kind of point it to the IP, type in the username and password. You probably will have to look up what port those cameras are using if you are using a mixed bag of cameras. But the good thing here is that if you're using one certain type of camera, like let's say Amcrest or Reolink or whatever, most of those cameras are going to use the same basic ports to function. For me, since I'm using kind of a variety of different cameras, a lot of them do use different ports, but still, once you type in the configuration and you load the compatibility and you just hit save, everything is good to go. All the additional setup does have a little bit of a learning curve on the surveillance station, but that's no different from Blue Iris. And figuring out some of these additional features that you come to expect with NVR solutions took a little bit of learning, but once you get them down, they worked flawlessly. For example, take things like the motion detection where you can set up different zones. You can tell it to ignore different zones if you want to. So if you're setting this up on your front porch and you don't want your camera going off every time a car drives by, but you wanna get a notification when somebody walks up to your door, you can do that. These are kind of expensive expected features, but if they didn't work, I would be ranting about it. So I just have to acknowledge it does work and it's pretty easy to use. But one of the biggest things for me is going to be remote access. Obviously you want to be able to pull something up on your phone anywhere in the world, wherever you have internet and be able to take a look at your cameras. That's kind of a big deal. Now, if you go the initial route, you don't set up a Synology account and you point it to just an IP address. You're going to have to do things like know what your home IP address is, uh, set up port forwarding and then log into it. But with the Synology account, you can just type in your Synology Synology username and log in, it will automatically route you to your NAS. However, the same thing can be said for Blue Iris. It's set up to where every time I launch the app, it automatically finds what the IP address is and logs me in. Now, the surveillance station has a ton of features and I can't cover them all, but I will say there are a couple honorable mentions. The first one is PTZ control. It's very intuitive, easy to use, and overall very reliable. And second, the ability to export recordings is super simple with a download link being at the bottom of every video that you're watching. It allows you to download the entire clip or just a specific time frame and it's super easy to use. Now that brings me to speed and you know the DS1019 plus is a pretty decent device by itself and it handles the surveillance station software pretty well. But for me I have six cameras some of which are fairly high quality and I have a noticeable delay when trying to scrub through the timeline to find events or even the initial launch of the live view. I mean after all the NAS is limited to a quad core Celeron CPU so it only has so much horsepower under the hood. So really it's kind of to be expected. And it does do what it needs to do. It just might take a little bit to do it, just depending on your setup and how many cameras you have. But one thing that I really like with Blue Iris that the surveillance station really seems to lack is the ability to find an event easily. For example, a long time ago, I had a cop show up in my house looking for a porch pirate or somebody who was stealing packages in the neighborhood. He had reports that it was a white truck, but that's all he had. With Blue Iris, I was easily able to scrub through a bunch of different thumbnails and find that white truck. But when it comes to the surveillance station, you have recordings, you kind of sort of have thumbnails, but it's just not nearly as easy to find what you're looking for as Blue Iris is. And most of the time when you're scrubbing through it, you're using their timeline feature, which gives you little blue highlights when there was an event, but it doesn't actually give you a thumbnail. So you're kind of clicking at random and just hoping that what you're clicking on has what you're looking for. It's a highly inefficient way to find events, and I really wish they would improve on this. In fact, I could just imagine clicking events and going and have this whole like larger thumbnails that you can scale up and down, make bigger, and, and actually highlight what set that off, and then click on that. But this, it's like you just kind of click at random and, and hope for the best.
However, when it comes to reliability, I mean, the NAS really stands out. It's an all-in-one device. Everything is built in and compatible with each other. You're not piecing together different parts for a computer. You're not building a Blue Iris server on top of a Windows computer. No, the NAS just comes all-in-one. All you have to do is download the app, everything's set up. It automatically boots if you have to reboot the system itself. And overall, it's just much less hassle to build and maintain than what you would expect from a Blue Iris server. Also, the NAS comes pre-equipped with two one gigabit bit network interface cards that automatically fell over if one fails. And if you do have a failure, the NAS comes with a three year up to five year extendable warranty that you can get. So if it does fail, you can send it in, get a replacement. And yes, you can get warranties on PC parts, but this is just something that all comes with one device and you have a set amount of time and it's just all one easy to use solution. So in conclusion, the Synology NAS is easy to set up and has a bit of a learning curve for more advanced options, but overall has everything you would come to expect out of an NVR system. The quad-core CPU of the DS1019 Plus is fast enough to do what it needs to do, but lacks the raw speed you will miss when you're stressing the system. The notification system offers previews, at least in my iPhone, that is no slower to load the full app playback than Blue Iris is. Cost is a big deal of the upfront investment of the surveillance station, and it has the potential to save you money in the long run with the right setup, but you have a higher chance of saving money with Blue Iris. Of course, this all depends on how many cameras you have or may have in the future. In the end, the surveillance station is a worthy option for an all-in-one solution that's easy to set up right out of the box, especially for smaller camera systems. But for anyone with a larger setup, the cost and performance of the NAS could be a deterrent. Of course, this will all depend on the cameras and the settings being used of each individual user. But if you ever outgrow your surveillance station system, your only option is to replace the entire NAS with a newer unit rather than being able to upgrade individual parts in a regular computer. For me, it's a little unfair. I'm comparing a NAS to a fully built X99 system running a 5960X processor and a 980 Ti. So of course, I'm gonna wanna stick with the performance and the familiarity that I already have with Blue Iris. But I can see the value of the surveillance station software and the ease of ownership of the NAS. I guess it really boils down to how many cameras you're going to install, how much it's gonna cost for you to set up, if you can't afford it, and a little bit of personal preference. Of course, I will link to the DS1019 Plus in the description down below. So if you wanna check out the most current pricing and additional specs on the DS1019 Plus, you can do so by following that link. And if you are considering this NAS for Plex, definitely check out my review. It actually performs pretty well when transcoding. So any questions, comments, or concerns, post them down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a good day.